So um, our next and final speaker on my program is uh, Ben Minerds, also known as Puzzle Duck. Uh, ben is from Melbourne uh, and he's currently working with Code for Australia and he's going to talk to us about uh, planning alerts, which he's doing stuff on with the Vic government. Excellent. Thank you, Ben. Thanks. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name's Ben Minerds and I'm currently on a Code for Australia six-month fellowship and part of that I'm working with uh, Department of Treasury and Finance uh, looking at reporting of Victorian, uh, reporting on Victorian government contracts. Uh, I'm also the president of Free Software Melbourne, uh, an avid hackathon attendee, campaigner for digital liberties and advocate of free and open source software. Uh, as I mentioned, I work for Code for Australia, and we're a small not-for-profit group of designers, hackers, advocates, and data experts determined to help our government work, work better and work smarter. Code for Australia tries to achieve these goals through various programs, uh, including the fellowship, which uh, I'm currently engaged in, where three fellows are teamed up and embedded in a government department for six months. Uh, the brigades, which are just starting up in Canberra, and the Civic Lab, where I first got involved with Code for Australia many years ago. Some of the other projects on our fellowship uh, include a system for lodging pleas for minor offences online and, and not having to attend court in person. Uh, that project was for the Neighbourhood Justice Centre uh, another, pro another ongoing project for Victorian Legal Aid uh, to replace a manual and error-prone reminder system with something a bit more automated. Um, and that team's now embarking on a mission to replace an intimidating and confusing web portal uh, with a more user-centric solution. Uh, the team at DWELP has been developing a site for alerting citizens to backburning activities in their area um, another one for wildlife rescue information, and you all heard Johan, or some of you may have heard Johan talk this morning about his team's project with Dwell. Um, and there's also another team working with the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage, uh, highlighting engage and encouraging engagement with cultural sites of interest in a user's area. So to talk about planning alerts, uh, let's take a quick walk in someone else's shoes and say hi to Tony. Hi, Tony. Uh, he lives in the outer eastern suburbs. Uh, Tony does his best to keep up with what's going on in his neighborhood and his local council. Um, but it, because of the way council boundaries work, uh, let's say Tony lives here on Logan Road. Uh, he's really close to three councils there. And so to know what's going on in his area, he'd have to monitor three different council uh, planning sites. Um, and if he wanted to expand his area of interest to, uh, say, his children's school or his work location, they also may, he may encounter the same sort of situation. This sort of situation happens anywhere where three councils meet, and that's pretty common. Um, but even if Tony does that, uh, even if Tony monitors all that, he can be surprised by construction in his area. Um, if the state government decides to build a new school or the federal government decides to impose new boundaries or something like that. Um, how could someone keep up with it? Planning alerts is part of the answer. Uh, in 2006 in the UK, on, at the Forum on Civic Information 2, um, Richard Pope first introduced his work on screen scraping that would go on to become the UK planning alerts. Um, in Richard's own words, uh, talking about his own council's website, uh, it's quite good, but it requires active participation. Uh, it suffers from the Arthur Dent syndrome. Uh, a web scraper is a script, just to fill anyone else in who isn't uh, up with that, is a script that runs usually on a regular basis uh, to request data from the web, request websites, um, and digest that information into a more useful format for the user, so, such as a database or plain text. Uh, initially, Paul, uh, initially Richard's uh, project was just a humble PHP scraper and covered only a single council. Uh, but gradually, the project gathered pro uh, followers and volunteers. 
Uh, Richard describes its functionality as a, a simple screen scraper that grabs the planning applications from Lambeth Council website, uh, emails the details to a mailman mailing list uh, with links to council feedback, further info and maps, and converts all those links into tiny URLs so they're really easy to share. Uh, over the following years, with support from mysociety.org and significant contributions from Michael Marin, Sam Smith, Duncan Parks, Tom Hughes and Andy Armstrong, and an army of scraper writers, the UK version grew to cover hundreds of councils and serve thousands of users and continues to be ad adapted and updated. Uh, it's now known as Planning Finder and we'll get back to what they're doing a little bit later. Uh, but a couple of people adapted a version for Australia, uh, Matthew Landauer and Catherine Zeminska. You'll have to forgive me for any names I murder, I've only ever met these people on the internet. Um, and by 2009, the Open Australia Foundation were announcing the launch of their new website, Planning Alerts. Uh, the project was funded by the Open Australia Foundation, uh, but received a little Kickstarter funding from the Government 2.0 Task Force. Um, but as we heard earlier today, that didn't last very long. Um, but took, started out by targeting the most populous areas in Australia. So it began with only 50 councils and authorities, uh, but they were the most concentrated in large populous areas. So uh, Open Australia have also made it uh, fun and rewarding to get involved uh, by sending out these kind of tweets once you write a scraper, uh, noting sort of how many people could be serviced by this scraper, um, along with the fact that just all of Australia is serviced by it. Um, uh, there's also uh, bulk download and APIs provided uh, on the platform, which we'll take advantage of later. Um, and, uh, and also uh, an Android app was even developed by James Purser and presented L LCA a few years ago. Um, but that appears to have fallen on hard times. So if anyone's looking for an Android project, uh, that could probably use some love. So uh, my introduction from planning alerts was through an open knowledge meetup in Melbourne. Uh, I'd had some interest and experience writing uh, a couple of web scrapers in Java. Uh, and so the meetup titled Learn to Scrape Open Data from Any Website caught my eye. Uh, on the night, uh, Hanare uh, Dagan took us through uh, a lot of the Open Australia projects, um, such as They Vote For You uh, and Planning Alerts, and also took us through the functionality of a simple scraper and demoed a, a simple, uh, walked us through the code of a simple scraper. Um, which brings us to what makes planning alerts tick. So uh, under the hood, originally planning alerts ran on scraper wiki version one and version two, as you'd expect those versions to go. Um, and the scraper wiki platform emphasized the collaborative nature of the development. So all of the source code was exposed in a, in a wiki page for, that people could edit. Um, and had a button that you could press to trigger the scraping and a display for what, what your scraper had done. So there was no local processing required. Uh, unfortunately, it has been superseded by Morph.io um, and now lives on as just a Ruby library to simplify the scraping. Um, advantages of Morph.io though are pretty good. Uh, allows for a more diversity in technology. So. Uh, Python, PHP, and Node are all also supported. And I have no reason at all to tell you that uh, Morph.io heavily uses Docker, other than that image. <laughs> I could not resist putting that in somewhere. Anyway, uh, I can't remember why the scraper I started on that first night didn't work. Um, but when I look back in the Git repository, the last commit is, first run at a scraper, destined to fail. And it doesn't even try to write data. But uh, about a week later, I had another go and succeeded at getting the Burdick and Shires uh, Council announcements on the system. Uh, this seemed to be exactly what I was looking for in a, in a hobby project. Uh, nice little bite-sized chunks of code, uh, achievable goals, uh, lots of similar examples lying around, other languages not to try, uh, what more could I want? Um, and a couple of my early attempts succeeded, uh, and I was enjoying the feeling of getting something done and sort of achieving something, which uh, you don't always feel like you're, you're doing. 
Um, and I figured if, if this sort of local council construction was a good thing, then statewide construction would be a much better thing. Um, but before we get into statewide construction, uh, I just thought I'd take you through a simple example of a scraper on Morph.io. So we can see, because I'm the owner, I can start and stop the scraper. Um, it displays the readme uh, and a few of the settings. Um, it'll then give us a list of the contributors. And you'll note there's two contributors here. So this uh, scraper in particular, uh, the council changed their website format and it stopped working. And I was incredibly busy at work and didn't get around to fixing it. And about three weeks later, this guy submitted a, a fix for me. So, and I think it's interesting to note down the bottom, they, it shows you who's downloaded the data ever. And it, it's interesting to note that the, the two of us who scraped, who've are technically inclined to scrape this data, aren't actually inclined to use it. And the guy who's inclined to use it, I've, I've checked out his repos, he's not a programmer, he cannot scrape data. Um, so, and, th and this is a principle that's really hard to explain to the government, that just because I'm, I'm, I'm capable of accessing this data and, and digesting it, doesn't mean I'm the best person to analyze it. That's probably a data scientist. And that data scientist probably can't scrape web pages. So, you know, we, we want this data in an accessible format so people who aren't like me can use it as well. Um, so we get a, also on Morph.io, we get a little uh, uh, extract of the data so we can have a look at what it's going to look like, a uh, few statistics, and then the past runs. So you can see. Uh, via the scroll bar, we haven't gone down very far. This scrape has been running for a year, and you can see what happened every single day uh, that it ran. So back to Tenders Vic. Uh, it didn't go well. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say I was, I was full of confidence and enthusiasm, and I was. Um, but Tenders Vic was just one of many difficult scrapers. Um, but a good example of some of the issues that we encounter. Um, when scraping web pages. So uh, Tenders Vic in particular was quite tricky. Uh, often you'd click on a link and the page you got back just wasn't the page you expected. Uh, if you were trying it in, in a browser versus on your scraper, you'd just get different pages. Um, uh, I've since heard about uh, uh, Hanare actually uh, mentions in one of his talks uh, using the IRB interpreter to write your scraper in a, in a kind of live interactive way, um, which as a Java programmer isn't something I'm used to thinking about, um, but it would certainly uh, help uh, make web pages seem a little mysterious. But our, our solution in Tenders Vic for a lot of the non-functioning non links is uh, there's a small, there's an ID number in the URL, um, and if we just copy that URL number and paste it into a contract link uh, that, we do, that we know does work with that replacing the ID, uh, we do get the page we expected. Um, there was also issues with uh, that field wasn't actually even populated. If you looked at the, without, without JavaScript, if you looked at the, all of the links, they were all blank, they were all hashes. Um, so this was why I had to experiment with uh, using PhantomJS um, so that JavaScript could run, it would populate the links, and then we could find out where they all went. Um, and the, the real hair-tearing bit of Tenders Vic is the next demo uh, where all I'm doing is reloading the page, if it ever loads, yeah. So you can see there's three entries, and then I reload the page, and even hopefully from back there, you'll be able to see that the entries have changed. Um, and all I've done is reload the page. If you request the p same page twice, you'll get different data. Uh, it doesn't seem to actually be refreshing now. But anyway, so, uh, but unfortunately this, I never got a good answer from them, but it, and it's, it, gets worse on multiple pages, so if, the, if there were five pages and you requested the first page, you'd get one page, but when you request the second page, you'd get a different second page to if you just requested the second page originally. 
and this is and so the solution for that was to trash the browser and reinitialize a new browser for every single request. Um, I don't know how they get it to do that funny business, <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, the session had to be reset or the browser completely reset every session, every page request, so I could get consistent results. Um, that was one of the last things that I found out and explained so many things that were going wrong. Um, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so a couple of, of hints really is, is Forget about following links. If you know the URL you want to go to and the identifier to get there, um, and and yeah, throw out the browser if it's acting acting funny. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, <laughs> um so yeah, so that's not the only problems. Uh, unfortunately, they're not all technical. Um, some nights I'd just spend hours looking for the council's announcement page. Um, and especially when you're new to this, it's not easy to know. Sometimes they're called development announcements. Sometimes they're called planning announcements. Sometimes they're items on notice. Sometimes they're development notices and every iteration of those. Um, some pages just seemed impervious to scraping, uh, a bit like the Tenders Vic. Um, if I didn't have dedicated time to have invested in solving all those problems, I prob well, I had actually previously just given up uh, and decided it was unscrapable. Um, uh, it, it, it also seemed like it used to be uh, reasonably easy to, to keep trying councils until you found a council that was scrapable. Um, and, uh, if this, you just give up on a council very quickly and move on to the next one. Um, uh, but yeah, but, and, a, and a few months ago, I think I realized why it seems so hard now, because out of 500 or so councils in Australia, there's only 150 to go. Um, so all of the easy nuts have been cracked. Um, and a lot of the, or a lot is overstating it, but a few of the, the ones remaining are known to be in PDF formats or difficult to, to scrape sites. Um, but there still are opportunities, um, but might require a little more effort or lateral thinking than before. So we're slide 15 of 20, and you, I haven't gotten around to talking about Treasury. What's with that, you might be thinking. Or you might just be thankful that I haven't started ran rambling about contract law and statutory reporting requirements. Um, we were tasked with looking into the reporting on construction contracts, um, and our first realization was that no one had a good pic big picture view. Um, each unit or group knew what was going on in their area, but the proverbial left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. Uh, so with what we've created, um, we're able to verify the capacity of a supplier across government. So this is a screenshot from our system. Um, and the department there, DHHS, IP, DHHS, um, are two different sub-departments of DHHS who may or may not talk to each other. Um, and this supplier may only be able to do a million dollars worth of work for, for Victorian government. That's sort of a limit that they may impose on that, that construction company. But at the moment, these two sub-departments don't know that the other sub-department has engaged them for a half million dollar contract. So each of them could think, I, I can engage this supplier in another half million dollar contract, but in fact, the, the supplier's capacity is, is maxed out. And this is something that without calling every department or asking everyone you knew, um, it wasn't possible to easily find out. Um, and we've also thrown in a couple of little D3 charts um, fortunately, there was a whole heap of extra departments that threw in data at the last minute and spoiled my key. But yeah, so uh, trying to match the uh, UK and the US in as quick and cheap a possible way. Um, but despite all those issues with Tenders Vic I talked about, that was the simplest way for us to get data um, handled by the, about construction projects handled by the Victorian government. Um, we had to scrape it back off them, uh, even though we were working from inside. Uh, we were told it would be some time before Tenders Vic 
could release data to us for use on this project, and they weren't kidding. It's four months later, and we're still waiting for an OK for data we were provided with weeks ago, um, which still took them three and a half. Anyway, uh, it's astounding to me that this is the kind of waiting game that public servants have to do as well to face uh, if they want to access the same data. They will request the data from Tenders Vic, sit and wait for four to six weeks, and then carry on with their, their, their work. Uh, just drives me crazy. Um, so what we've done is we've set up a Tenders Vic scraper on Morph.io uh, to regularly retrieve the contracts and make them available for download. Um, so I've done a little demo of using the uh, Morph.io API. So the top line is just a command I'm sending. Uh, under the red, or above the red underline is the query I'm sending, just a SQL query. Uh, and the first one there, uh, I'm looking for all contracts that have been revised. So this is also something Tenders Vic doesn't currently do. If they update the, the information on Tenders Vic, you can only get the final version. Uh, I'm keeping track of every single version. So here I'm just listing, I'm limiting, limiting it to three entries so it fits on the screen. But these are three of the contracts that have two versions. So let's take uh, 374431 and have a look at that. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a very interesting change. It's from current to expired. Um, but I, I stumbled across a rather more interesting change while I was doing some research. So the second query uh, takes a look, and you'll notice that revision one and revision two have different phone numbers. You also notice revision two has a nine digit phone number. Interesting. <laughs> I don't think they exist. But anyway, um, so yeah, we can now analyze what happens to a contract over its lifetime, at least as far as it's published. Um, I do want to get, I do want to encourage you to get involved in uh, screen scraping and planning alerts, um, but be warned, maybe it won't be as easy as, as it has been. Um, many councils will have issues or be PDFs or be tricky in some other way. Um, but still, a lot, of, a lot of work can be done just uh, finding the planning announcements for councils and adding them. There's a, a document a, uh, in the planning alerts introduction material. There's a document where, crowdsourced, where we've crowdsourced a whole lot of information about councils. Um, and just finding the council planning alerts site, uh, council's announcement site page and linking to it there. Um, would help people concentrate on what they're doing. Um, and this is now a little hobby I do when I don't have time to write a screen scraper. I can just look up a couple of councils, try and find their planning alerts, their planning announcement sites, um, and add them to that document. Um, it would also be interesting to start tackling PDFs. Um, apparently, a lot of them are OCR'd, and so while people like uh, Hanare and myself just run screaming as soon as we see a PDF, uh, they may not be as difficult as they look. Um, a lot of them may actually have text, um, accessible text within them. Um, but if they are in non-machine readable formats, um, or PDFs that don't have OCR, that's something we can't fix with scraping. Um, and we really need people who can outreach to councils um, and convince them to, to get on board and change their ways. Uh, this might get a bit easier as we get the numbers. Uh, now they're sort of the last people to go. Um, so where can we go for, from here? Um, I've been working on a prototype for a Node.js scraper, as there aren't any planning alert scrapers in Node.js, despite that being possible. Um, I'm still having issues with it, so if anyone's good with Node.js, please come and see me after the talk. Um, uh, so I wanted to get back onto the UK again. I'll skip a couple of other little bits. But um, because, yeah, it's really, it's great. The UK is once again revamping its planning alert system. Um, but this time with a new twist. In 2014, they announced the Hampshire Hub Partnership in conjunction with mysociety.org. Uh, and I'll quote, quote Mike Thompson from the project. Uh, saying, we'll be using the fabulous planningalerts.org.au open source code base as a starting point. Uh, planning Alerts is a piece of software built in Ruby on Rails by our friends down under at Open Australia. Um, 
So the last demo is a whole of government slash whole of something. I'm not sure what it is. So this is a data set I've, I've put together from Tendersvik, OzTenders, and the council scraping sites. So uh, using planning alerts, Melbourne Scraper, uh, I've downloaded all the Melbourne data, and as I said before, the Vic and, and OzTenders uh, data. It's a bit of a useless data set because they're very inconsistent. Um, whilst planning alerts have addresses, Vic and OzTenders don't. While Vic and OzTenders have prices, have contract values, uh, the council announcements don't. So it's a fairly uh, basic list. All it gives you is the title, dates, uh, and identifiers. Um, but starting up here from Australian data down to about halfway, we get a bit of Victorian data. And from, there's not much Victorian data, but then from then on, it's Melbourne data. So the idea is, in this data set, if you find a construction, a, a place where, a construction site in Melbourne City, it will be on this list somewhere. Uh, if, if I was trying to be comprehensive and have everything, if you kept all the addresses that had helped uh, matching the ones that do have addresses, but the idea is, if there's construction going on in Melbourne, it's in this list somewhere. Um, it's still a messy data matching to make that useful, but uh, some of the things we've recommended to Treasury is to include uh, addresses in those uh, contracts, even if it's not applicable everywhere, it's really useful when it is applicable. Um, and then that kind of list could be plotted and mapped. So, uh, and we can recreate that with any uh, council covered by planning alerts. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, so yeah, some spending might just have to be ambient background spending on the state or the country um, because it just can't have an address such as uh, IT infrastructure or uh, an IT support contract can't, doesn't necessarily have a location that, that makes sense. But every construction project has a location that makes sense. Um, and that at least can be stored in those national, um, data, national and state databases. Um, and planning alerts uh, goes a long way towards showing them that it can be done. Um, uh, so I encourage you all to get involved and lend a hand to finishing off scraping the, the entire country. Um, demanding data from the councils, developing data standard adapters, tools, or writing your own apps with the planning alerts API. Um, for this talk, it was the first time I've played around with the API, uh, really fun. Um, and yeah, certainly something I'm gonna be doing in the future. Um, and yeah, if you're super dedicated and motivated I'd cons about opening data and, and making government work better, I'd encourage you to consider joining the fellowship program and get out there and make a difference. If you wanna hear more about the fellowship or scraping, come and see me after the talk. Uh, I've got stickers too. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>